When you think of livestock, you probably think of cattle, or sheep, or maybe poultry. But what about something a little smaller? Micro livestock, also referred to as mini livestock, is the practice of raising and breeding insects as livestock. But why would you want to farm insects? Insects can be raised for the commodities that they produce, such as honey or silk, and they can be used themselves as food or feed for animals. Two of the most common insects that are kept as mini livestock are crickets and bees. The use of insects for animal feed can rival the nutritional value of feeds made from fish, such as fish meal. Grasshoppers, moths, and even houseflies have been reported to have been used as feed supplements for poultry. Besides poultry, insects can also be used as feed for reptiles, monkeys, and other birds. The high nutritional value of some insects means that they are also beneficial for human consumption. Crickets are the most common insects used for human consumption. The practice of consuming insects, also known as enomophagy, may sound strange to us in the West, but it is a practice which has existed in the world for over 30,000 years. Many cultures around the world include crickets as a normal part of their diets. Crickets can be dry roasted, baked, deep fried, and boiled. They can also be turned into a powder known as cricket flour after they are dried. This cricket flour can be incorporated into a wide variety of recipes and offers a boost to the nutritional value of foods that they are added to. Crickets even contain more protein than beef. Crickets also contain only about a third of the calories as beef and a quarter of the fat. There are also no diseases that can be transferred to humans through the consumption of crickets. Today, the raising of livestock accounts for about 70% of agricultural land use. Raising crickets takes just a fraction of the land that it would to raise other equine livestock. And the entire raising process of crickets is done indoors and would even be able to be done in urban areas. The slaughtering of crickets is done very humanely. It is only after crickets have lived through their entire six-week life cycle that they are harvested. Crickets are most commonly killed through a process called deep freezing, in which the cold temperature sedates them before they die, preventing them from feeling any pain. From there, they are usually baked until they are dry, and then ground into cricket flour. One company in Canada produces about 500 pounds of protein from crickets every week, which is enough to fill the daily protein requirements of about 80,000 people. Raising crickets requires a substantially smaller amount of feed than for raising other, more traditional livestock. It takes 12 times more feed to produce 100 grams of beef than it does to raise 100 grams of cricket meat. Crickets also only require a quarter of the amount of feed that sheep require and a half the amount of feed that chickens require to produce the same amount of protein. Cricket farms also have a very high turnover rate when compared to other livestock industries. It only takes about three to four weeks for a cricket to reach full maturity. An adult female can lay about 1,500 eggs over the course of a couple of weeks. Cattle, by comparison, reach maturity after about two years and only give birth to one calf every year. The production of mini livestock is also beneficial for the environment. There are no farmed insect species besides termites, which release methane, and none that release ammonia. The greatest problem surrounding the farming of insects in North America is the stigma surrounding their consumption. But, perhaps in the future, insects such as crickets will become a regular part of our diets. Thank you so much for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and click on that bell icon so you can see more videos like this in the future.